our guests. Uh, welcome to our Executive Entrepreneurship Lecture Series. Uh, I'm Dave Herman, I'm the instructor for the course, although we don't have a whole lot of instructors because we have these great people who come in and speak with us. Um, for those of you, again, at the regional campuses, uh, just a weekly reminder to uh, keep your mics off during the presentation and then at the end during the question and answer period, you need to have to turn them on. Um, I'm going to turn a few uh, minutes over to Kevin Rice from Old Main here, it's in the development office. He's going to introduce our speaker tonight. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. But I also have uh, uh, some of the attachment to our speaker because he uh, did a surgery on my son's knee several years ago. So, actually, managing for a wonderful gentleman and an excellent physician. Good evening. Definition of an entrepreneur risk taking business person, a person of passion and vision who initiates the finances. Commercial enterprises. Synonyms: business person, innovator, tycoon, magnet. Chris Inaro, industrialist and financier. Our guest tonight not only epitomizes what an entrepreneur is, but his picture should be placed next to the definition. Dr. Marlo Goebel has been has been a pioneering researcher for the past 30 plus years and is perhaps best known in orthopedics as one of the top surgeons in ACL reconstruction. He performed what may be the first minimally invasive knee replacement procedure and research by Dr. Goebel has resulted in an issue of over 100 plus, according to him this evening, 104 patents, with more still pending. According to several research periodicals, Dr. Goebel is the most cited, to reiterate, the most cited orthopedic surgeon in the world. He served as, as the director of the Utah State University Medical Device Testing Laboratory in the Department of Animal Science and is an adjunct professor at the University of Utah Department of Orthopedic Surgery. His previous work included founding several companies, including Medicine Lodge, an orthopedic technology development firm, Facet Solutions, Orthopedic Specialty Hospital, Western Surgery Center, and Frontier Biomedical, a leader in comparative medicine. Dr. Cobble's most recent research company, Venture MD, currently develops and funds orthopedic research ideas. Other notable achievements, including serving <laughs> as lead surgeon for Zimmer on the prosthetic ACL development and as Utah State's team physician. By way of a personal note, I met Dr. Goebel 26 years ago as a student athlete and while he was working during that time, the Western Surgery Center idea was we developed. Changes were on the horizon in terms of how that would be treated medically in Utah State. And some of the newest medical procedures were being developed by Dr. Goebel to help minimize the downtime of athletes in surgery. I personally saw family, friends, and, and teammates benefit directly from Dr. Goebel's innovative <coughs> medicine. We were very lucky to have him. He's a passionate father of five children, grandfather of 13, devoted husband, his wife Michelle, and a friend of the He's an accomplished pilot, loves the outdoors, loves ranching, and is a fanatical fitness freak. And I'll just explain this. He doesn't know that I know this, by the way. Every now and then, if you go by the spectrum, early evening, you'll see Dr. Goble doing the stairs of the spectrum, which is walking down and sprinting up every flight. Um, that's if you ask me, but he does it. He does it with a smile on his face as though he's enjoying it, which proves, once again, the commitment that he has had in everything that he's done in his life. He's excelled, exceeded any expectations, that probably he even had in his own mind. 
he is a true entrepreneur. My pleasure to present Dr. Marlowe. Thank you.
we call this non subsidized by because he has to be successful. So he will make a decision when he approaches this marsh that he will or will not go in, he will not attack the team. Neither will raccoons or coyotes. He's good talking. I'm sorry to interrupt. This is the facilitator in Orem. We're actually catching maybe one out of every 12 words. If they domesticate, he will jump straight into that water, he'll swim like a fool, waste his energy, he'll come back with nothing. But at the end of the day, he is dead. As I've said, it takes a long time for a predator, and in fact, that is their only source of food, probably through the innovation process. He would have developed web feet, he would develop airbags so he could float. He would develop systems sitting for thousands and millions of years so he could get his feet, but it's not the industry. Humans are much different. Humans have a cerebral cortex. They have an opposable thumb, and they can act for it. Solutions that we have when we were faced with that <coughs> situation, we wanted to gain those eggs or we fed those animals for our food. We would look at it and we would say, what if, what if I did this? So we would build a boat. We would shoot a missile. Perhaps we would go find a dog. The combination of the cerebral intelligence and the thumb to oppose the second finger allow us to ask questions such as, what if I did this? And then have the ability to use our hands to do so. So that makes us the most different than the natural evolution. When we think about versus artificial intelligence, which we're coming on very rapidly, anything that we can conceive in our mind I'm going to talk about some barriers because it's fit in my eye and from two different points. Barriers are things that we're born with, that we must understand our size, our speed, our intelligence, our eyesight. We are born with certain, certain barriers. Others don't have those barriers. And the selection of what we do in our lives and how we spend our time has a lot to do with understanding. I want to discuss with you, since I'm a little older, I'm 64 years old now, I was just like you. And I've always remembered that because they did 
I, I, I didn't understand why he wouldn't pay us. But it was an extraordinary amount of work for a third grade. You know, I had grandkids. I don't think I get all of them to do one second. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, I grew older and I And uh, I 
in this yard box. So I took some classes. And the best I could do was keep. And so one day I, I got went along with this at the end. It's really much really studying the heart. And I didn't understand what was going on. I decided that I wanted to be a chemist. And I just go to the University of Utah. But I couldn't handle it in my hand. I couldn't figure out what the weights and the limits and the weights. And then one day I got into organic chemistry. It was three years ago. And here's these quizzes from Hedlund. Here's what we learned to synthesize the molecule. And we had to do it the right place around the benzene ring and some magnesium. And I did that in the case. And I was probably the uh the uh 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 and somehow in organic chemistry, I later learned that I was scared of most. I couldn't do the interfaith chemistry, the microbiology, the pharmacology, but I should understand organic chemistry. And in the given set of circumstances, I could create something. I couldn't understand myself because I, I was such a disappointment to myself in my studies that I couldn't compete. I should be able to do that. And yet, my hands were short. And that was the beginning of my understanding of what I call barriers. And the one that said, you know, if you're five foot eight or nine, you're probably not going to get an NBA investment. And you have certain abilities to inform you. You're fortunate enough to have somebody who can not And it gives a great opportunity to put you in the direction that you would best accomplish something. But as someone pointed out, people hear that. Good in some dimension. This is what you form for in some of these shades. But what do they really mean? It really is true that each of us are able to do things better than others. We have some body gifts, some mind, some abilities that we understand. But we seldom know how to function. And so, what I'm going to discuss with you is. Some of the things that change the way I do things is in my understanding of myself. Barriers are also things that I learned that you must create. But I don't want to create a day to do. You must create to allow yourself to be competitive. And so you provide barriers to entry meaning that you spend time in areas of your expertise becoming more and more senior and more and more advanced so that people cannot compete with you. You're too good in that area for the numbers to get you. And we all do that. We just want to understand why we do I'm going to talk about some innovations which came about because of this type of thing. I started out after coming out of school at St. Louis and mm -hmm. you know, by the way, St. Washington University is the best known school for Harvard and Michigan. They're, they're all behind St. Louis. Barnes Hospital is the center hospital. And uh, I mean, they've been in that place for the lowest rate average, the question is over the same. But 
their private school and then they make decisions. So why she was really good for them. And there I learned that I couldn't compete. And I said I learned that I didn't care about it. Because I had an active classes. Half of my classes were in this and they're all PhDs in the methods. They didn't have grades that had a pass fail. Honors, high pass, pass and fail. Those are things that they're going to And by the back of the years, I never had anything other than a pass. I never had a high pass. And then I got into clinical things and got into surgery. To me, I look at some people, what they're trying to accomplish. And I see how we're trying to accomplish it, and I can see other ways of doing it. And it was, it was a fun experience because it uh, was exciting to get the little work. And it was in my uh, third and fourth years where I had my first high class. This suture anchor right now is the basis for every sports industry in the world. We don't have suture anchors, and we don't have sports anchors. They allow us to arthroscopically repair those are the cuffs, knee ligaments, other things. They allow us to. The simple idea of putting a pain from the bone and the suture from the out of This is the first animation done back in the day. Uh, so the sound the next time they were really, this is really fancy stuff. Right? <laughs> this is how we put it in the bone. We put a knee line, I go in and pull it right back to this bleeding bony side, which was at the first element of the pain. That's how we need to go to the customs. And this industry, this one we shows up, repair a knee of collateral ligament. This is how we repair shoulders. We put them back to this updating shoulder. We put like three of those in there, pull it through the torn ligament of the cuff, and we'll pull it in by sutures through these little instruments. Looks like also the head and it stabilizes the dislocated shoulder. That's what it looks like on x rays. And this is the first patent I ever had. And this is where the name suture anchor came from. And if you don't look at it, you used to play the suture in the wall. This is how it worked. Fill it in, this is in the cadaver knee. And you pull it out. So simple. So simple. My wife Michelle and I went on a fellowship to Boston, Switzerland. And that's hours and hours of operating on the best in the world. We would do transosseous sutures. I mean, we go all across the knee, coming out the other side, and the sutures do it. And we cut it under tunnels full of sutures, doing it. But we get several limbs to pull back. And I looked at it. And to me, it looked like, why don't we just install suture? That point is all we need on the green that we can back. We did that sometimes with stables and big devices, but then we didn't have room for function. So burying something in the bone and then letting the suture go back to the exact side of the bone. To me, that was intuitive. And as soon as we finish the surgeries, uh, this is what Michelle and I discussed in the time we got the United States. We've been making this. This right now is a billion dollar industry. And the day of is probably 700 patents in the world. We don't have some changes at all. I don't know if we have repair systems. What about ACL reconstruction? This is Western surgery that Kevin was talking about. We built this in conjunction with the president who's there at 
Committee and the State of the Art Sports Medicine Complex. The purpose for this was to combine trainers, physical therapists, docs, and coaches, all in the same facility. It was the best in the United States by the Within this facility, we developed the first ability to get in an anti-speaker a single incision. So we drill through the tibia and just the paint. This used to be a, this is how it works. This used to be an operation that done with two large incisions and you're in the hospital for four days. We reduce it to a to one small, one, one bone into the other, and small into the two. And uh, the patient should go home the same day. Personally, if you don't have it done the same day, you're showing sure the paper thing. The tap, it's just tapping the bone eye up in. It's like you're doing the wood. Just tap it up into the bone, the threads. Take the tap out. That's the scope showing it's up on the screen what we're doing. And after the, over here on the left hand side, the graph is prepared to go up in. This graph has a threaded piece on the end, like element. That's a long drive we want to so we install it through the front of the knee, through the tibia, across the joint, and into the femur. And what you're seeing is the first graph. This is the thread piece that goes in this magnified sort of time. So we're threading this graft up in, and we'll pull the driver out, and the graft will be installed. And this will take four hours of surgery with two large incisions long time in the hospital. Sometimes the surgery was worse than the injury. <laughs> I have a fluoroscope going to show me my landmarks. You can see inside of me where I want to be. It's going to drive her out. You know the rest. And then we simply attach the graft up on the side. So this is an animation form. It's the way the JCL procedures are done. The soap opened up a rest mess of scissors that's put on the outside. So the only incision is the one that's in. These are the first ACL procedures done in the world that would require a lot of incisions. And that changes the image. This is how the limb looks inside. Or you make the record high is the posterior cruciate, which acts the twist on each other. I'm sure a lot of you have friends that have had ACL reconstructions. And this is how they're all done. This procedure can be done with one or two and as fast as 23 minutes the average of standards. That changed in four hours. We're watching on this screen a little bit so that was the beginning of the ACL, ACL world. And all of the fixation devices, interference screws, cross pins, all of the different systems, channel types, we use throughout the world to, to do this arthroscopic work. We fix them, we call it endoscopic and endoscopic. We develop right thing. When you tear your meniscus, that's that spacer inside your knee, when you tear it too badly, uh, your knee work. So, starting in 1990, the new Logan, we put in a hundred transplanted meniscus. Somebody that died. This is what we ended up in the back. This is all meniscus. This is intended to replace that which you brought. So, you get ready to put the sutures in in advance because when you pass it into the knee, it's very difficult to thread these. Sutures. And that's the device that we put inside of you in the way this animation shows. There are two in this one. One's on the left already. That's its mirror image. It's coming in now. We install it with two bone blocks and we sew it to the edge. And that's changed the way people function. And that would miss this where you're knee out or you have pain and swelling. And it happens to a lot of 30 and 40 year olds. So we can't play ball with the kids once they're used to them. Put them in a municipal allograph. This thing will last for 10 to 20 years before we have to go on and get the nature of the year before we need it. But at least you have a really good function for that. A lot of people still 
what you would have seen as an animation show how we replace the things on only the football pieces. The same cassette ones that not use. This is going on in the FDA right now. It's in its fourth year. And it's probably the most innovative facts. They were coming to the United Fusions. But the FDA is not cooperative. They have now spent $60 million and we're six years into it. We're going to have to spend another six to get through because it's so new. But we're installing them. China, Brazil, and Europe. Basically, because of the FDA right now, we're nine years behind. See these cassette that move up and down these things? That's in the back of the spine. You know that's the number of the student middle. And when the bone goes, it hinges up on the spine like you see there, and you get the feet out. And the decompression means you remove that, that bone. And you're putting in a perception. You take out, as you can see, this, this bone, you put pressure on this vertebrae, and then when you replace it with these metal pieces, they're anatomically exactly like the steps. Each segment has a pair. It's been done at the top of the academic centers in the United States right now. It's about 300 to do a further line of study. They've got infusions, they've had zero complications. People show up and drive to the office after them and jump up on the table. They don't have a racist one. It's pretty revolutionary. We can see the FDA is so sick in the mud. It's a problem that the United States is now out of the we started with medicine lines, medicine lines, just to show you this kind of video on it. It's a ranch up in Idaho, fly fishing stream. So it was named after it. It began with Logan, founded in 95. We sold to a public company named Innovation Devices. This later became MyTech, and they built uh, two. And they bought a company that they built here in Logan, actually in Smithfield, in the Leeds market. And the only reason they didn't move it back to New Jersey was because.
Those companies now hire over 400 people in the Ashtar area to be met of the amount of engineers and machinists or social uh, pride to each other. I mean, because now in Ash Valley, if you have a kid that goes through high school and doesn't want to go anywhere, you can get a job and it's continuing to make that three thousand dollars. Or you can go on to school, I was in Beijing in China right now, in graduate school in chemical engineering, because so many graduates are uh, here, across the years. And uh, that's a quote from that. So we have places in the world for the highest educated, the, the greatest barriers to entry into the profession. And yet, he was supplying jobs to kids who had enough sense not to push themselves through. Still, if you would, you don't have to do that. Venture MD, I realized we started two years ago. We have these three portfolios, high portfolio companies, and they all companies that uh, have developed around the single product, like Suture and that. And we develop them, take them to the FDA, and then we sell them to the big companies. And they market and sell nothing. Right now we have loose engineers in Orlando, Salt Lake, Phoenix, Dallas, and Florida. We keep our engineers to 8 to 10, so we can them in the business and support them. We spread them out. So we are independent, we also need to use the regions of the country and access to the U.S. Barriers to entry, therefore, that have been provided by what you just saw is that we have engineers that will develop, stay up the set. These guys are so keen into it that they know everything in the world of the and have any construction. And as soon as they cut them, and turn it over to the company that they develop it for. They're free to do the same thing with the company that they've done with intellectual property tax. So the company can come in now and use the same set of engineers that are so deep into that minefield that they don't have to be educated much. The engineers have got the most experience because they just develop. But the competitor is positive. And the competitor doesn't care because he's protected by patents. But we know we have four patents. But we don't need to develop the system. We need to only wait to be able to get the companies. They can track the arms, the engines, and the machines to develop the product. That's 
go to China, Brazil, or Europe to get into this. I think the USDA, I mean, the FDA, that's the issue. The FDA is the greatest deterrent of innovation in the United States. It's innovation that brings about the possibilities of new things. Now, if JFK didn't take this and he made it in the late 50s for the space program, our nanotechnology becomes all of our artificial intelligence. We have no idea of the potential that comes from a combination of artificial intelligence and the, uh, the biological intelligence. And how rapidly we can do things. That's what we need to do. But because we allow politics to be we penalize something new because it has a number of little reactions. Those countries are going to do it in a few more rounds. What I'm talking about isn't my ideas. In, Jan, in, in 1972, England, we were a medical student there. Every book in the bag for them to so England was the innovator in this. Nationalized uh, their health system. And they did the same thing for regulatory agencies and paying expensive things from coming to the market. We have a company for 40 years. This is only one job, one researcher in medicine. I don't know what you On a happier note, I've seen you before the Red Kurtz Wild at the Longevity Center in Palo Alto. And I wonder if you are interested in living forever, the singularity of the universe. Have you heard of that book? Of course. Well then, which is the only great singularity of the universe? Something about the mind. The singularity of the You're right. When I talk about it, what it talks about is and the combination of artificial intelligence with biological intelligence. You know, when you ask me some questions about medicine, I make some mistakes because my server and my mind can only so I just you plug that into artificial intelligence. You can go 70,000 times faster than no way. So if you plug those two together, possibilities, then as he points out, we're all really working. There'll be the day when you keep going. Red blood cells in the body are the carry oxygen, they have to fit in the oxygen. And they go out to the muscles, they give away the oxygen to the myoglobin, because the myoglobin is a higher affinity than the human. And a little red blood cell, they can spit them out. But there's the possibility that the real reality is going to come that we're going to experiment technology that will produce oxygen in the nanotechnology. Oxygen carrying molecules, including bloodstream, don't carry the oxygen without any of those. So if you had a battle and you lost an arm and you're bleeding out, those of you that grab the oxygen from the lungs without any of those. It's because we have the ability to combine the unlimited tension, the speed, and accuracy of artificial. So, you can't see. 
So is that why you started uh, Venture MD is so that you could have your own venture firm raise private private equity? Business said. Probably the other reasons. But the uh, with, with the problems I just mentioned, you can't afford to give any away of the kinds of financing. And so we did that. So it's the votes for all this and it's worth. So now our motivation is we're going to start the raising. Transition. I said accelerating highs and devastating lows. See, right now, we're doing quite well with the transitions, but now we're starting to see things get better. Yeah. 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 Class three means it's never been done before, so. Oh, right, no, I was asking, like, you have to raise your own capital now because, you know, that's because of the capital. Yeah, that's right. What happens if you have an FDA electric from an energy and say this is going to be new? So you make some calculated decisions and you take some risks and that's what you want. The FDA says no risks.